Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Saturday, November 4th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Rutgers game is today, the game against Michigan in 21 days. We are here in New Jersey. I'm joined by Kevin Noon of BuckeyeHuddle.com. The Buckeyes just arrived in New Jersey. If you want to watch the live arrival, hear a little bit from Ryan Day when he got here, you can watch that. We posted that on Friday night as a live show. Tony Gerdman and I answered a bunch of questions as well, talked about an hour about the Rutgers game, about the Buckeyes arriving, what we learned from Ryan Day, all that kind of stuff. You're going to get a little bit of cliff notes on that here right now from Kevin and I. Kevin, I guess the first piece of news that we got from Ryan Day was someone who, you know, was not, the status was a little bit up in the air earlier in the week, but Lathan Ransom, safety for Ohio State, did not make the trip to Rutgers. What does that mean for the Buckeyes on Saturday? Well, I mean, Lathan Ransom has had a tremendous season so far. So, I mean, it's a loss in terms of not having him. I don't think that it is a huge loss for the next three weeks being Rutgers, Michigan State, Minnesota. You have you have three weeks to get him right before the Michigan game. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to rotate their guys to be able to account for that. You're going against a Rutgers team that is not a very pass-first type of team. A lot of more stuff is going to be in run support. It's going to be about trying to figure out how to spy uh, against Gavin Wimsatt. They're very mobile and run-first type of quarterback. Uh, obviously, you don't want anybody to get hurt. Team is pretty healthy otherwise, but you know certainly that is a loss that nobody wanted to see as he kind of got pulled from the game, uh, went back to the tent, went back to the locker room, then came out looking pretty gimpy. I would expect it to be a couple weeks. Yeah, and so based on what we saw last week, I'm guessing Josh Proctor at the adjuster, that deep safety position where he's been playing all year, kicked Sonny Styles over to the bandit, the ba- boundary safety spot. That's where he was sort of towards the end of last week's game. And then Jordan Hancock in at the nickel spot. They have loved Jordan Hancock at the nickel so far. He has done, he's been done a dynamite job this season. You saw Sonny Styles there earlier in the year. It felt like you were seeing more and more Jordan Hancock. So this may just be, especially this week where you're not expecting a lot of, you know, deep shot passing from Rutgers. This may be a great week for Sonny Styles to be at that bandit position. Absolutely. I think that, that it's, a, it's going to be a good opportunity. You do get Hancock in that nickel where he has really excelled. I think it is a good opportunity because there were so many times we were like, okay, we know 10 is going to be on there and with, with Denzel Burke. We know one is going to be on there with Davison uh, Igbenosin who's going to be playing against his brother, not directly Desmond Igbenosin, who also is a defensive back. But you're going to be able to have 10, you're going to be able to have one, you're going to be able to have six, and you're going to be able to have seven out there all at the same time. So while it is a loss with what Lathan has been able to do so far, I don't think Ohio State is taking a dramatic step back by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, and this is this is not the type of offense that's likely to stress them in that you know in that downfield kind of area. Gavin Wimsett has been, you know, an okay passer, completing like 50-ish percent of his passes. He's elusive. He'll make some plays with his legs. It is not. This is not a team that's going to pop you for 300 yards through the air. So you know, it's a capable Rutgers offense, but it's it is a Rutgers offense that spiritually feels like it should be playing on a Big Ten West team. Right. Exactly. I mean, it's uh, Gavin Wimsatt passes for 141, 142 a game on average. 20, 21 pass attempts a game. That's just not that type of offense now. You always want to talk about breaking tendencies and everything else. He's a 50.3% passer. More pass attempts by a 50-50 coin flip type of passer I don't necessarily think is going to be the right way when you're trying to to pull the upset. So, yeah, I agree. It is more of a Big Ten West type of offense. It's you know You'll hear people talk about complementary football and the offense sort of sets up the defense. The Rutgers defense is really good this year. They have not allowed a 40-yard play all season. There are only two teams in the country that have not allowed a 40-yard play on defense. They are meeting at SHI Stadium on Saturday. It is Rutgers and Ohio State, so don't expect a ton of explosive plays. Rutgers will kind of force Ohio State to maybe work their way down the field. I'm guessing you'll see maybe a couple pops down the field for Ohio State, but it's not going to be easy to do that against Rutgers. Rutgers kind of makes you earn it. One thing that could help Ohio State earn it, they got Travion Henderson back last week or so at a different set made. Ryan Day said, Emeka Ibuka is here. Emeka Ibuka should be good to go. This is the third week in a row that we heard Emeka Ibuka is good to go. But with the weather being, you know, last week it was like 30. Tomorrow or Saturday it's supposed to be in like the 60s in the afternoon. It feels like another week of rest, better weather, dry forecast. 
this should be a week when you should be able to get a Mecca Ibuka back on the field. You should. I think that the the conditions are going to be much more ideal in that in, in in that instance. So I think it is a good opportunity. Yes, people during the Friday night live show are quick to say, "Well, we were hearing all the same things last week." Well, mm-hmm. this is this week, yeah. and I think this is going to be the time before you have back-to-back home games, and then of course the big game at the end of the regular season. But at some point, you're going to have to get them out there and test some things and try some things. And I think this is going to be the week we see them. And you might just see him in limited action. That's a possibility as well. We were thinking, you know, based on the way they were talking, we were assuming we were going to see him last week in Wisconsin, and then we didn't. And then, so now, based on the way they're talking, we're assuming you're going to see him on Saturday against Rutgers. Maybe you see him for no snaps. Maybe you see him for 10 snaps. Maybe you see him for 30 snaps. We don't, we don't know yet. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if Ryan Day knows yet. That might be a see how he feels when he wakes up and warms up on Saturday right. morning kind of situation, too. Because he, he, even two weeks ago against, two weeks ago was against Penn State at Ohio Stadium. He was out on the field and, like, while the team was over at Skull Session, Emeka Ibuka was already at the field, like, getting warmed up. He has wanted to play. He's wanted to be out there. It's been more like team doctors telling him, like, yeah, maybe wait another week. He wants to be out there, so I'm sure he's going to be pushing for it. You know, whether, whether it happens on Saturday, whether they wait to get back home next week against Michigan State, we'll see. But, you know, it, it does feel like there's been some, some progress there. There's been some progress with the Ohio State offense on the whole. This is going to be a decent test from Rutgers. Again, this is, you know, in some statistical categories, one of the better defenses in the country. I think they're, they're like 13th in the, in the country in points allowed per game. It, it, is, it is a solid team. They're 6-2. and two. This is not the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad Rutgers team that we've seen in the past. This is a team that feels like, you know, Ohio State, Barring something incredibly stupid, Ohio State's going to win this game. But this is a Rutgers team that should test the Buckeyes in a way that previous Rutgers teams haven't been able to, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I'm, I'm probably not as bullish on their defense as Tom is, just because when I go through tail and tape, mm-hmm. I've looked at who Rutgers has played. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and they have played... The Big Ten, spoiler alert, isn't very good outside of two and a half teams. Mm-hmm. And they have played one of the good teams and lost that game 31-7 and honestly could have lost by more but the dogs were called off a little bit there uh, and then they have played Drek but they have done a good job against Drek we have seen Rutgers go against Drek before and say hold my Drek I'm going to out Drek you and uh, so I'm not here to say that they can't play defense Greg Schiano obviously a defensive minded head coach uh before his head coaching roles, he was he was a DC. I mean, even after he was a DC, so that's all going to be there. I think Ohio State is going to have to earn some things, but I also think that there's going to be a good opportunity for Ohio State to hang one or two uh, 40 yard explosive plays on them. Yeah, it does. It does feel like Ohio State should be able to poke some holes in this defense because you know, I mean, they have they have done they have beaten the teams that they were supposed to beat, and that is real progress for Rutgers. They're bowl eligible because they are already they were bowl eligible before Halloween, which is I mean like a miracle for this program. Greg Schiano really does deserve kudos for what he's done because this team was when we were out here four years ago, it was like this is embarrassing. This is why is Ohio State playing a team that's worse than Youngstown State, and why are we driving eight hours to watch that happen? This year, like. They have beaten all the other crappy teams. Of the Big Ten. They they are they are not the bad Big Ten team. They're the they're in the like mid tier, middle tier. They are mid, and that is great for Rutgers. And you know even you know they're gonna they've got Ohio State coming up. They've got Penn State coming up. Those probably are not gonna go great. They got Maryland at the end of the year. You they could, could see them. That you could see them win that game. They, I mean they could be seven and five. For Rutgers, compared to what Rutgers has been, that that is legitimately good. And I think that, you know, this is a Rutgers team that you have seen in the past just sort of be a pain in the butt to Ohio State. Just like, you know, the the bee that or the gnat that's kind of like just around you, like, you know, he's not going to kill you, but it's like, this is really annoying. That was Rutgers in several recent years. You know, the gnat has gotten a little bigger. It's a little more annoying. It's still not going to kill you, but it's... It's going to be more annoying. I, I had Ohio State winning this game 27 to six, and I think you were you were a little higher scoring, but kind of in that same neighborhood. 38-7. Right? Yeah. I think that uh, the offense is going to be challenged. I think it's Wisconsin-like in terms of the offense, and then on the defensive side, I just think that with everything that is going on, they say to shut out the noise, shut out the noise, but. You know, some people out there are making things very personal about Ryan Day and his family and everything else, and I think we're going to see a little bit more 
determination. How about that? We'll use that as a word. A little <laughs> bit more determination. I think we're going to see a little bit more offensive success out of Ohio State. I think we're going to see them get off to a little bit of a better start than usual. Uh, that doesn't mean it's going to be a game devoid of some of that malaise that we've seen for eight games. But 38 points is what I think they'll score. Yeah. Well, we will be there at uh, SHI Stadium in lovely Piscataway, New Jersey, on Saturday covering the Buckeyes and the Scarlet Knights. We'll have your pregame report coming up a couple hours before kickoff with the official availability report. We obviously know no Lathan Ransom. We'll find out if there's an update on Emeka Ibuka and any other injuries that we may not be aware of. That'll be coming out around 10 a.m. on Saturday at youtube.com slash huddle. And then, of course, end of the game, we'll have our usual live post-game show. Tony and Kevin and I live from the stadium. Mark and I think we've got Mickey this week. Mickey, maybe uh, maybe Devin. Devin. Yeah, we'll find. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll find out when we, we turn the computer. Yeah, on. we got it. We got it. We got a, uh, a full team here coming for you. It is November. November is for uh, contenders. We will be here contending for your post game attention at YouTube.com/slash Buckeye Huddle and of course at BuckeyeHuddle.com where we have you interested in supporting us and learning more about what we do and uh, maybe taking a deeper dive on uh, this year's Ohio State team and oh I don't know whatever else is going on in the college football world. Whatever that might be, you can do that at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Sign up to become a member. Get access to our huddle board where we do all sorts of great, uh, lots of uh, lots of active content. We have uh, like 3,000 posts on the thread on the Michigan uh, situation and just continues to churn lots of interesting information there. Sometimes more information that we can share out in uh, public. So I uh, find that at the, uh, the huddle board presented by Jeff Ruby Columbus at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.